Hello and welcome to Willy Care TV News. I am Mercy Babadidi. The news headlines. 21 Chibo girls return with 34 kids after 10 years of abduction. In business, nationwide darkness looms as electricity workers threaten strike. On the foreign scene, United States, European Union, others warn Iran-Israel conflicts could destabilize Middle East. And in sports, Nigerian striker Victor Boniface and Tel Ali Leverkusen uh, to historic Bundesliga title. Welcome back now to the news in details. Ten years after the abduction of 276 girls from the government girls' secondary school, Chibok, Borno State, a report out the weekend revealed, among others, that 21 of the released girls came back with 34 children. These, according to the report released by the Mutala Mohamed Foundation to commemorate the 10th year of anniversary of the abduction, served as a devastating confirmation of the sexual violence and coerced marriages the girls were subjected to in captivity. Also, the report hinted that 48 parents of the abducted victims died since the girls were kidnapped with widespread psychological trauma for survivors and their families, leading to health issues and barriers to work and education. The Chief Executive Officer of MMF, Dr. Aisha Mohamed Uyebodi, in the virtual presentation of the report, stated that the Foundation had set out 10 key recommendations that urged the Nigerian government and the international community to collaborate to enhance security measures. She also advocated a zero-tolerance policy to ensure that those who were responsible for the atrocities documented were brought to justice no matter how powerful or well-connected they were. And now, President of the Ninth Senate, Senator Ahmed Lawan, has called on military authorities to immediately investigate the killing of three innocent civilians by soldiers in Gashu, the headquarters of Bade Liki government area of Yobe State. The former Senate President made the call in a statement he personally signed on Sunday while reacting to the tragic incident. Lawan, who currently chairs the Senate Committee on Defense, said that efforts must be made by the Nigerian army to ensure that the perpetrators behind the act of violence were held accountable and responsible for their actions. If all their appeal to residents will come, while assuring that he has already spoken with military authorities to ensure that those responsible were apprehended and dealt with according to the law. The lawmaker condoled with the families that lost their loved ones during the tragic incident. And our government and security agencies in the southwest states have beefed up security around government structures and institutions with machinery put in place to forestall the breakdown of law and order by any group forcing an agenda on the state. Also, security agencies have warned that they would curtail any form of insecurity, adding that anyone parading himself as a Yoruba nation agitator should either toe the path of peace or have himself to be blamed. The warning by the Southwest government and the police came on the heels of an attempt on Saturday by separatist Yoruba nation agitators to take over the Oyo State Government Secretariat, Agudi Badon. Now, according to reports, the agitators donning army camouflage and armed with rifles attempted to hoist their flag on the premises of the Oyo State House of Assembly. The attempt was foiled by security agencies, with 20 of the agitators arrested. And now let's go on a short break. We'll be right back. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ubeleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back now to business. And our nationwide darkness looms as the National Union of Electricity Employees, NUEE, has insisted on withdrawing their services if the Nigerian government fails to rescind the recently approved electricity tariff hike. Now, in a statement by its acting general secretary, Dominique Ibike, NUE told the Minister of Power, Adibayo Adilabu, that if nothing was done about the withdrawal of the tariff, its members would take decisive action. Now, we call that the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission had on April 3rd raised electricity tariff for banned customers getting 20 hours of power supply daily. However, NUE joined the Nigerian Labour Congress, Trade Unions Congress and others to condemn the tariff hike. 
The workers in the power sector insisted that it is not feasible to have 20 hours of electricity supply, and the government should rescind the tariff increase. Meanwhile, the federal government has appealed to members of the National Union of Electricity Employees not to down tools over the recent electricity tariff. Now, the organized labor on Sunday listed its expectations ahead of the 2024 Workers' Day, calling on the federal government to announce a new minimum wage on May 1st. The National Vice President of the Trade Union Congress, Tommy Etim, who spoke with correspondents, described Workers' Day as Christmas Day for workers. He noted that there were lots of expectations, particularly since some of the newly initiated policies of government had continued to push more Nigerians into poverty. Etim said workers in the country were expectant of the new minimum wage. According to a report, the organized labor comprising the Nigerian Labor Congress and TUC have demanded 615,000 naira as a new minimum wage for workers in the country. And now, four of the tier one banks in the country, FBN Holdings, Access Holdings, Guarantee Trust Holding Company, FPLC, and United Bank for Africa, PLC, have indicated plans to raise about over $3.03 billion, that's 3.46 trillion naira in fresh capital. Now, this came barely one month after the Central Bank of Nigeria directed deposit money banks to recapitalize. According to findings on Sunday, the four tier one banks uh, announced plans to raise funds from both the international capital market and the local market. At least two of the financial institutions, FBN Holdings and GTCO, announced the plans to raise fresh capital last week, while Access Holdings said it would raise capital in both Naira and US dollars. FBN Holdings, in the notice of its extraordinary general meeting, filed with the Nigerian Exchange Limited disclosed that it would be seeking shareholders' approval to raise 300 billion Naira additional capital. Up next are our stories on the foreign scene after the short break to stay with us. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ubeleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back now to Foreign Sin. Countries around the world on Sunday condemned Iran's attack on Israel, warning that it could destabilize the Middle East. Now, late on late Saturday night, the Iran's Revolutionary Guards Corps announced that they had launched dozens of drones and missiles towards military sites in Israeli territory. The attack, according to the mission, was conducted on the strength of Article 51 of the United Nations Charter pertaining to legitimate defense. Israel yesterday confirmed that Iran launched over 300 drones and missiles towards Israel in its unprecedented attack overnight, injuring at least 12 people. Israel's army, however, said it had shot 99% of the drones and missiles with the help of the United States and other allies declaring Iran's attack foiled. And in entertainment, the family of iconic Nigerian actor John Okafo, popularly known as Mr. Ibu, has released details of his elaborate burial ceremony that will span five days. The celebrated actor will be laid to rest on June 28, more than three months after his death at Lagos Hospital. Now, after close to five decades in the film industry, during which he walked his way to the top before death struck, the world will bid farewell to iconic actor, a ceremony that will span five days during his uh, community's culture and religion will intersect. Explaining the delay in burying the actor, Mr. Ibu's elder brother, Sandy Okafo, noted that the iconic actor will be given a heroic send-off befitting his status and the delay in burial. The statement revealed that Mr. Ibu will be buried at his home in his hometown, Amuri, in the Nkanu West local government area of Enugu State. And in sports, Nigerian striker Victor Boniface scored the opening goal and assisted in another as Bayer Lekavixusin humbled wedding Bremen 5-0 to clinch their first ever Bundesliga title in style on Sunday at the Bayern Arena. Sabi Alonso's men sealed the title with five matches left to play, ending Bayern Munich's 11-year reign in the process and now have the chance to become the first side to go unbeaten in an entire Bundesliga season. Boniface was making his first start for the club since recovering from a groin surgery. 
which kept him out since January, and he made it count by converting a penalty in the 25th minute to open the scoring in the historic win. The penalty was won by Jonas Hoffman after Nathan Teller's dangerous cross into the box. The 23-year-old then assisted former Arsenal man Grant Zaka for the second goal, while second-half substitute Florian Weeds scored a hat-trick to complete the route. Now Boniface and his compatriot Teller, who was handed a place in the starting lineup ahead of the Jeremy Frimpong, have now joined former Super Eagles midfielder Sunday Ulisse and Pascal Ojigwe as the Nigerians to have won the Bundesliga title. And just before we go, here's a recap of the headlines. 21 Chibo girls return with 34 kids after 10 years of abduction. In business, nationwide darkness looms as electricity workers threaten strike. On the foreign scene, United States, European Union, others warn Iran-Israel conflict could destabilize Middle East. And in sports, Nigerian striker Victor Boniface and Tel Ali Leverkusen are to historic Bundesliga style too. And that's the package on our bulletin. Kindly follow us on all our social media pages at Willike TV and visit our website at www.willike.tv. I am Messi Babadidi. Many thanks for watching.